What's up, YouTube? Yesterday, I updated the audiobook maker to be compatible with the latest version of Tortoise. So just wanted to go over the installation on how you can get the audiobook maker working once again. And um, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. So you do need a couple of prerequisites for this one. You need an NVIDIA graphics card. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with any other accelerators. So need an NVIDIA graphics card. And then you also need the AI voice coding repository version three installed on your computer. If you want to know how you can get that installed, check out this video here where it'll be linked in the description as well, but that's going to be needed for the text-to-speech portion. So with that, um, having NVIDIA graphics cards and having the AI voice cloning version 3, uh, we're going to head into releases here where you'll find the latest link to the audiobook maker. It's going to be linked here. So click on that and it'll bring you over to this page where you can then click on this download button here. So let's click it. And then just find a location that you can easily access and download it to it. So I, I'm on my desktop in a delete me folder. So I would save it here and it would get um, started on downloading. It is pretty big. It's about 3.7 gigs. So so once you're there, you do need to extract it. And that's what I have going on right now. So the audiobook maker is extracting. So give this a little bit of time and it will finish up. After this install, it'll be about six gigs. So it's going to be a pretty hefty extract. The reason for that is because it has all of the modules needed inside of it without you having to do any installation. So everything comes packaged into the repository. Already, it's all finished up. So let's head into the folder here, the V3 folder. So what you can actually do if you don't want to double click twice into here is you just uh, control X and then go out to the last uh, folder and control X again and it'll move it one directory up. So here we are right here and everything is packaged in here. So once... Uh, we're in here, just click on start package bat and it's going to launch the audiobook maker application. So I'm going to show you how you can also get everything all set up that you need to interact with tortoise. So let's get this launched. All right. And so this is how it's going to look once it's launched. You can check, you can select the background if you want to select the background image. So I have one default. It's a train. Um, but let's go ahead and get this all set up for tortoise so i'm going to go ahead and launch tortoise so start dot bat as is the process with tortoise and then there are a couple of things that we just need to make sure that we have set up inside tortoise so that it works as well with the audiobook maker Alrighty, saying that it has launched uh one thing that we need is we need to go into settings and we need to change the results folder so we need to turn this into a hard path or an absolute path so what we can do actually is just go into your folder uh, so let's just select results and then copy as path. Or what you could do is just double click into it at the address bar. Just do copy address as text and we'll paste that into here. So that uh, that'll fix one issue that you might run into. And here you want to do all of these settings that um, you might want for additional speed. So I'm going to run with deep speed for speed bump. Um, I don't have a quick way to switch between hi-fi GAN. So we're going to leave hi-fi GAN off for now. And then you want to select all of your auto regressive models here. And these are the ones that are going to generate the text to speech voice. And you can check that out in the tortoise video on how you can get more voices or how you can um, train more voices because there's not an actual place where you can download these. So everything should be set up here for the most part. As long as you can generate and it generates audio, you should be all good to go. And so here you can see we have audio being able to be generated. All right, now we're going to do some setup for the um, configuration that we need for Tortoise. So we have this tort.yaml file here. What we need to do is right click it and let's open with Notepad. So here is what you're going to be met with. And there are a couple of things that we need to edit here, but you need to know some things from Tortoise. So delimiter, we'll leave that. Emotion, leave that. Custom emotion, leave that. For voice name, we need to put in a voice. And so if you've trained a model inside of Tortoise TTS, um, you will have a voice here. And that is what we're going to um, need to input. So in this case, I have a Mel voice here. Let's go into the Tort YAML. And then I'm going to put Mel here to, to match the voice that's in Tortoise. Leave all of these other ones um, the same. And then for samples, we are actually going to do, we're going to do two in this case. It just makes it faster. And then for iterations, I'm going to put at 50. Uh, diffusion sampler, I'm actually going to do capital DDIM, DDIM. And then for all of these other ones, I'm going to leave at the default. So if you've done any custom settings inside of Tortoise, you can also do um, all of that modification inside of here as well. Now, 
Another thing that you want to make sure that is selected off is you don't want to run audio output through RVC. So make sure you uncheck this inside of Tortoise. Um, this is new with version three of Tortoise because the audiobook maker already has this built in. Now I do need to fix that to where it um, allows you to uh, turn it off so that it's just a smoother integration, but this is the way that you have to do it right now. And so with that, everything should be good to go. So we can go to file, save, and then we'll exit out of tort.yaml. And then we'll go back into the audiobook maker. So the way to generate an audiobook um, in here is we need a text file. And if we head into the audiobook maker folder, um, I have this text small, um, just this test example here. And this is a small bit of text, but basically you would copy everything and anything you want into a text file and then save it. And so saying that you have a text file, uh, we're going to select select text file and then go into the audiobook maker and then we'll select the text. Then we'll name it. We'll call this test. You can name it whatever. And then for voice model here, if you're going to select the RVC voice that you want to use. So this is where I was talking about why you need to turn off RVC. It's because it's already built into the audiobook maker. Currently, there is no way to untoggle RVC in the audiobook maker. That will be coming in a future, future version. But in case you want to change the voice um, that is selectable inside a voice model for RVC, um, you want to head into voice models and put in your RVC voice models here. So if you have questions on what RVC voice models are, um, those are the voice to voice models that allow you to convert a, another voice into a uh, the target speaker that you want. And I'll link some videos down below where you can check out more RVC things as well. So voice index would be where you put the RVC voice index in there. But if you're familiar with all of that, you should be, um, you should know which one are index and models. And so once we have that, we can now just select start audiobook generation and it's going to start generating, um, the audiobook. So what you want to do is head into the audiobook, uh, terminal and just check to make sure you're not getting any errors here. This is okay. This 404 not found is okay because it's just checking the, um, the response back from the response back from Tortoise. And so as long as what would, as long as we're getting text back here that we can play, um, we are good to go. So let's go ahead and play audio. Narration of Rosira using text to speech marine edition. And so there you go. We have the audio uh, being generated and coming back to the audiobook maker. Um, and all of the same buttons apply. So you can do play all from selected. It's just going to autoplay everything. And it'll go into the next one. And then the next one. And then you can click pause here. It'll pause the playback. And once it's finished generating here, we can actually go ahead and do a couple of uh, things like regenerate audio or continue audiobook generation if you somehow paused. So let's say we want to regenerate audio for this sentence here. We'll click regenerate audio and then the interface will actually freeze until it's done. Um, so just wait until it's unfrozen and uh, we can select other sentences because that'll indicate that it has finished regenerating that uh, sentence. And so it's done now and it will have a new audio uh, put into there. And then there are a couple of other options in here as well, like continue audiobook generation. So let's say, for example, it crashed or something along the lines of that and you want to recontinue later. Uh, you can go into audiobooks of the audiobook maker folder, double click into the uh, audiobook that you want to continue. Then you just select that and then use the same settings from the previous generation of the audiobook. We're going to select yes and it would continue generating. So I already finished all of the generations here, so don't need to continue. And then there are a couple of other things you can adjust like font size here. You can change the font size and then file. You can um, update audiobook sentences. So say for example, you wanted to um, let's go into the audiobook maker and create a new sentence. So let's just say, hello there. Hello there. Testing. And I'm going to save this file here. 
what I can do is go into file and then update audiobook sentences. And then what I'll do is um, go back into that file that I edited, click open, and then a new pop-up will occur. It says, this will delete audio for existing sentences if they have also been modified. Do you want to proceed? So what this is going to do is if you modified any previous sentence, it's going to delete those sentences as well and regenerate audio. So let's click yes. And then we'll select the audiobook that we want to um, update, which is going to be test in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and select this folder. And then I'm going to generate new audio for new sentences. And then I'm going to use the same gener uh, the same settings. So this last sentence right here is going to be generated, which is that um, hello testing that I wrote in there. And so here we are, hello testing. All right. And then I went ahead and cleared the background image. So you can clear the background image if, if you want. And everything is working. So let's click play audio. Hello there. Testing. So perfect. That is working as it should. And then um, we've got an export audiobook here. So if in case you want to export this into one single um, wave file, you can go into the audiobook, select it. And once you do that, go into audiobooks, test, you'll see an exported audiobook um, folder. And this can this contains all of the um, all of the audio, but appended together. So they're all uh, put into one file. So that's what you get here. And depending on this pause between sentences um, option, yeah, let me see. If, uh, I guess I have to change this a little bit. The pause between sentences allows you to specify a. Um, explicit pause between each file so in this case you could do like one second or zero and you know you can kind of change that so it's not dynamic unfortunately it's all static so it'll be one set pause for all uh, between all sentences so that's how you can export an audiobook um, and let's say that you want to load an existing audiobook you can go into load existing audiobook select the audiobook you want to load select the folder and here we go we've got the audiobook i think that is all in here that i wanted to go over um, just a recap of everything that's inside of the audiobook maker um, from the previous install video i know that was quite a bit a while ago so some of you may be new to the audiobook maker so just wanted to go over that and that is going to be um that's going to be it for the latest video on the audiobook maker all right so yeah i do have plans on making um some edits to the audiobook maker some adding some features to the audiobook maker and uh we'll see how that ends up going but in the case that happens, I will go ahead and make an updated YouTube video on the features that I added to it and so on and so forth. But the installation will remain the same. But that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, I'd like to thank all of the followers and members of the channel. Very much appreciate it and very much appreciate the support. Sorry, I haven't come out with much content over the past week. I actually got sick last week and I'm still recovering. So my voice is a little hoarse. But other than that, um, yeah, you stuck, stuck all the way through. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. See you guys.